What we see looks very different than the types of changes that you see in a, a cigarette smoker or a, a marijuana smoker. Um, what we see with these vaping cases is a, a kind of severe chemical injury that I've never seen before in a tobacco smoker or a traditional marijuana smoker. Uh, but I, I think we've only seen the tip of the iceberg. What we attempted to do in this study was to examine what is actually happening in the lung in patients who have injury from vaping in their lungs. And so what we did uh, was we reviewed lung biopsies from 17 patients who had this problem. It's the first study to actually review the actual changes in lung tissue related to vaping. And what we see was, in this study was uh, universally all of these patients had what appeared to be a, a chemical type injury or toxic chemical fume injury in the lungs. So the injury in the lung looks like a, a caustic chemical injury that then um, will, will injure the lining of the airways, which is not surprising because that's how the vaping aerosol enters the lungs through the airways. And then the lung tissue surrounding those airways will often have the same types of changes. It looks like a, a chemical burn or a, a caustic chemical injury. And then uh, depending on the timing of the biopsy relative to the exposure, we'll also see uh, other changes as the body tries to heal that injury. One of the problems with vaping is that it's, there's so many products and materials and substances in the market. With tobacco, there was only one culprit, and so it was very easy to get a good sense of exactly what the acute and long-term changes were on the lung from doing that, from smoking that material. And the same is true with marijuana smoking in the traditional sense. Uh, it's a single substance, and the types of changes that can be seen are relatively predictable over time. Uh, but the sky's the limit with vaping. It, you, if you can imagine um, adding some kind of liquid of any sort to your vape juice, you can probably vape it. So I think the first and most obvious takeaway from this is to listen to public health officials and the recommendations to avoid vaping, particularly in those populations who are vulnerable, pregnant women, um, young people, and it's obviously a, a rampant problem in our society now and a largely unregulated industry. And I think there need to be efforts to address the problem and potentially regulate the problem and help protect the public health, um, protect our young people in particular. Um, and we need to know more about what's in these products and have better quality control on the products that are entering in the market.